hello okay so we, today we're having acne vulgaris and we're going to take on acne vulgaris i know some of you call this one pimples now the acne vulgaris first by definition is that these are common follicular disorders affecting the susceptible air follicles and as you all know that there are air follicles are all over the body these acne vulgaris are most commonly found on the face neck and the upper trunk of your body so when you feel like you have some bump or scaly small tiny pimples like structure those are what we call the acne vulgaris in terms of epidemiology this is how this disease is distributed in terms of gender age race time place and from person to person now in a general uh, directive that you need to know it is most commonly encountered skin condition in adolescents and young adults between 12 and 35 years old and then equally can be applicable to either of the male or female so the genders both of them are affected equally the most important or very significant thing is that uh, you need to know it becomes more marked at puberty and during adolescence because the endocrine gland that influences the secretion of the sebaceous gland are functioning at their peak activity so to those people who don't have pimples or hackney vulgaris at most it means that their endocrine are somehow inactive in a state in a way that you can compare the two guys there yeah? the person with the active vulgaris the endocrine has actively that is why to ladies those are very fertile and like those ones who don't have pimples at most they tend to respond less in terms of fertility and so on and so forth but that doesn't say that that is a hallmark to diagnose in fertile from fertile the pathophysiology that is basis of how this interferes with your physiological mechanism that is you need to know the during the puberty the androgens uh, which you know these are just hormonal especially the secondary hormones they stimulate the sebaceous gland and they'll cause then large and secret sebum and you know sebum is a supple like fluid which always makes the skin to be supple moisturized and then smooth and also they contain some antiseptic in a way in a way that they can fight bacteria which are not normal flora now another thing is that uh, the, the, the sebum will rise to the top of the hair follicles and then flows out into the skin surface and then acne will occur when accumulated sebum plunge this uh, what we call the pillow sebaceous duct the duct on the sebum so when they they accumulate the sebum will form the plugs right and then they will be that swelling like or a bump like so these accumulated sebum they'll form comedons and these comedons are what we call the bump like swellings yeah and i'll define comedons at the and the in the next chapter so the air follicles will contain the normal floral bacteria at normal and then this bacteria will now start normal bacteria are the normal flora the ones which you normally contain our body freely without any problem but now the bacteria will now start secreting the enzyme lipase which will react with the sebum to produce free fatty acid that trigger inflammation remember inflammation is a cascade that enables the body to restore its normal auditor but now triggering inflammation when it's not necessary is very hazardous why because inflammation comes with inflammatory mediators which can now result to several things like accumulation of the lymph uh, fluid maybe yeah there are many things that can come from the pain etc and so on and so forth vasodilation vascularization will increase on those areas see redness the hallmark of inflammation i hope you know them redness hotness loss of function blah 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 so the bacteria will produce lipase which will react with the sebum to produce free fatty acid that trigger inflammation because when a, a lipid is digested by lipase it forms fatty acid so those fatty acid is what will trigger the inflammation let's define comedons these are just skin colored small bumps the way i told you you can call them the papules frequently found on the forehead and the chin of the face with acne so these are what we call the pimples a single one we call it comedo and then yeah we can heave up the more than one that is comedons now one an open comedons are blackheads why are they black because of the surface pigment of the melanin and then we have open and closed the closed comedons are whiteheads the follicle is completely blocked that is why they are whiteheads so utaona closed one kiangalia pimple kichwa kiko white but ile iko closed iko black in a way so that is that clinical manifestation how will you realize that this is now uh, acne vulgaris you need to know how you know the acne vulgaris in a simple notion the primary relation is the comedons that is at start and then the close comedons 
have got quiet sets and they're obstructed. Uh, lesion formed from impact clippies and keratin. They plug the dilated follicle. Then on the closed comedon, that was open one. Now, closed comedon may evolve into open comedons in which the contents of the duct are now in open communication with the external environment. So, to mean that they can erupt and release. So, open comedons are blackheads, the way I told you before. Why? Because they have accumulation of lipids, bacteria, and epithelial debris inside them. So, entirely for you to know that this acne guys, it is going to take a visual analysis, observation. See on the facial appearance, the expression, terms of skin, texture, those bumps, the, 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 the column comedons, those are what will give you. So some will know this one is suffering from acne vulgaris. So some closed comedons may rupture, releasing an inflammatory reaction like erythematous papules, inflammatory postules, and inflammatory cyst. This skin lesion appears on the shoulder, pierced chest, and the back as well. Then we have an image there which you are able to see. We have open chemodon, closed chemodon, inflammatory acne. So like we have an air shaft, that's a structure of our skin. You can see we have erectile muscles, the air erector muscles. And yo, you, know, you know this one from your high school knowledge. We have sebaceous gland which now will secrete the sebum. And then the sebum, the whole physiology now comes from the sebum. You see in the, on, the, on the closed comedon, it is still intact. In the open comedon, it is exposed to environment because there is no plug which has already filled on the on the duct right yeah the papilla the subpicious the duct itself and then on the inflammatory acne is already projected on the fourth image and you can see and then finally you'll see what you're able to see on that lower chamber there you'll see what you're able to see on that lower chamber let me let me try to yeah you see now that's this uh, we have as a cystic acne, it's already swollen. That is, even on a paswanga pass, then it 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 throw out that added thing. That 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 that. that. So let's proceed. Medical management. How do you control or manage this? What do you treat it first? The goal of uh, management. What you need to achieve that you need to produce bacteria colonies that can help because you know normal florals are there to help in protecting your skin. So you also need to decrease sebaceous gland activity so that it can it can not produce a lot of oil, eh? and then you need to prevent the follicle from being plugged by the sebum, and then you also need to reduce plug to mean that this is just just in a sebum because it attains a ion in it, acne, and then you'll have to reduce inflammation to combat secondary infection because when you have inflammation there's high chances because that's an open it's an open body, I mean, it's an open wound-like structure. An acne is already an open assertion. So it can permit bacteria and inflammation can bring secondary inf infection due to immunity factors. When the, the, the dendritic cells comes on to play a role in protecting your delicate skin due to several of these conditions, colloquial comedons are all over, they'll end up contracting external diseases which are maybe by your skin surface or maybe you are in a contact with any form, form, formite which is contagious and so on and so forth so you need to reduce inflammation so that the secondary inf infection cannot relapse or maybe cannot lead to and then you need to minimize scarring to mean that usi dondoe dondoe make sure that the the open one is closed so that and then the entire thing is healing a nice way so that you don't have scars left after it is healing and then another goal is to eliminate factor that produce post one to acne right the factors such as the detergents which you can be using some oils will increase the effect of sebum or act as sebum so you need to also eliminate for that predispose one to to acne right so topical treatment is needed to treat mild or moderate lesions and superficial inflammatory lesions then systemic treatment is required for severe and extensive acne systemic topical near kupaka that was a kupaka they are very main some are in the, the normal oils that we use, like in the aloe vera, uh, the body locks of aloe vera. Some are just being bought like anti-inflammatory drug. We have ointment, we have ointment of hydrocortisone, corticosteroids which you can use. Then systemic treatment requires severe and extensive acne. You treat them using now parental administration. That is what we call systemic treatment. It can be through even GI oral or can be through injection. 
you can avoid food that increase the acne development such as fried foods wash the face with soap for mild acne to remove excessive skin oil so at the moment you clean the skin oil using soap it's a isha and then we are still going we still have so we have benzyl peroxide preparation there are ones which are used to in reduce inflammation they also depress sebum production and promote breakdown of comedo plugs vitamin a can as well be used so the acid can be applied topically topical to me on the top of skin then it will be used to clear keratin plugs from the filosebaceous duct then topical antibiotics can also be used to suppress the growth of the papilloma acne what we call the propionibacterium acne and the pro the ones who are gram positive human skin commercial we have salicylic acid or what you call the aspirin benzoyl peroxide these are always the effective and removing the sebaceous follicular plugs we have benzoyl peroxide produce an antibacterial effect decrease comedon purpose and postules because if at all bacteria plugs are in those comedons they are going to be uh, to be removed so that is what the effect of benzoyl peroxide is then an example of benzoyl peroxide are just the tetracyclines that we know the clindamycin and the erythromycin though that is not the basic classification that we know but that's a title example for them now then hormones therapy we can because we know this is always as a result of endocrine of the secondary growth hormones which are released like the estrogen the androgen at large so you can give estrogen therapy to suppress sebum production and reduce skin oiliness you can also administer to female patient at most because they are the ones who produce estrogen then extraction of comedon content well the vilemna paswanga is on my pimples there yeah? you remove them then you can drain the pustules and the cyst and then you, we leave it to ill after that you give the health talk to patient and family about proper skin care techniques advise the client that heat humidity and perspiration is a big technique you also instruct the client to wash the face gently using mild soap twice a day and then you instruct the clients not to squeeze blackheads not to rub the face and use cosmetic cautiously because some may exhibit acne avoid moisturize and heavy oil based cosmetics and then that is what we call the end this is medical students arana dr uma is presenting thank you